New England Patriots training camp trolls along. Parker is starting to pop and got Chow in the fold for a long term. What does it mean for the New England Patriots moving forward? We discuss that today and more. Stick around. You're about to be locked in to the Locked On Patriots podcast. You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all of you Foxborough faithful, and thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage and also your first listen every day. Remember, Locked On Patriots is free and available on all platforms, so download, subscribe to, and follow Locked On Patriots wherever you get your audio podcasts and smash that subscribe button on YouTube. Welcome back to the pod, folks. My name is Mike DeBate. I cover your New England Patriots for Patriots Country of Sports Illustrated. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Patriots. And also you can interact with me. Let me know what's on your mind at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. And Patriots training camp continues to move along on the practice fields adjacent to Gillette Stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts. Here today to help me break down some of the highlighted storylines in Patriots training camp so far is our resident voice of reason. He is a columnist extraordinaire from BatsFans.com, as well as being the co-host of not just one, but two amazing podcasts, Patriots 4th and 2, alongside Derek Havens and Russ Goldman, and of course, One Patriots Place, alongside a very good friend of the program, Thomas the Count of Murphy, Fisto Murphy, and of course, Claire Clasi, Claire Cooper. He is my Patriots paisan. Steve Balistrieri joins me today. Welcome back to the pod, my friend. Thanks, Mike. Uh, actually, I'm joining you from the recliner today, not the desk. So I'm not already in bad. weekend mode. I'm, I'm hitting weekend mode a little early. You got to love weekend mode. And you know what? You know who's not in weekend mode, though? Your New England Patriots. Our New England Patriots, folks, they continue to hit the practice fields each and every day. Training camp opening on Wednesday. Three practices in the book, Steve, as we are recording this. And there have been a number of storylines, a number of standout performances for the New England Patriots thus far. I've been boots on the ground covering for Locked On and for Sports Illustrated. And the one thing that is just continuously the theme with this team right now it's camaraderie. You really sense a like between the coaching staff, the players, um, a cohesiveness that I don't know if we necessarily saw last year. I think there was a lot of uncertainty, still a lot of new faces, a lot of moving parts. I think this year you're starting to see these guys come together, and it's really showing on the field. A couple in particular storylines that we'll talk about today, folks. Devontae Parker really starting to pop as a potential big-time option for the Patriots in the passing game. He's developing a great synergy with Mac Jones. And, of course, it all comes down to offensive play calling. Everybody was up in arms a couple of weeks ago when the Patriots announced their coaching staff titles. But who's taking the lion's share of that play calling duty? Well, Steve and I are going to discuss that in just a moment. But, Steve, one of the big surprises of the week uh, was the New England Patriots signing Devon Godchow to a two-year extension, um, really taking that level of what he signed for last year and investing even more capital, investing even more time into him, essentially committing to him for, I don't want to say the long term, but the semi-long term for the life of a defensive lineman in this league. The Patriots are clearly happy with the output that he put on the field last year, but You look at the statistics and you say the Patriots were not very adept at being able to stop the run. They still had their difficulties last year. Bill Belichick goes on record when we talked to him earlier and said that, you know, the problems that the Patriots had with the run last year should not be put on Devon Godchow's shoulders and called him one of the best defensive linemen in the league. When you look at this extension, first of all, what was your reaction to the extension? And second of all, what does this mean for the middle of the Patriots defense? Well, I think that, like you said, first of all, I think they're committing to Godchow. Obviously, a lot of people had him being cut this year. So he's going to be here probably for the next three years, Mm -hmm. minimum. And, you know, he's only 27, so he's still still a young man. 
And, you know, I think, uh, I think they like what they see, you know, with him and, and Barmore. I think that's going to be the future of their interior line, at least for the next couple of years. And, uh, I think it's a good move. I, you know, as much as I like Lawrence Guy, I thought he wasn't his usual consistent self last year. Mm -hmm. um, That's a good point. You know, I didn't think Godchild was perfectly suited to be a nose tackle, mm -hmm. but I think if you That's use him as point. an interior defensive lineman, like a just a uh, a defensive tackle, not lined up right over the nose. I think he, he's very, very good at that as, as an early down guy. He's not a great pass rusher, but those big dudes in the middle usually aren't. Um, you know, when I, I, I look at a guy like him, I, I just think, you know, and then Bill talking the way he did and the players that they have, we could see more 4-3 this year. Yeah, I definitely, definitely can see that this year, and I think we will see that. Look – the argument, I think, is valid about God Chow and, you know, some of the inconsistencies that we saw last year. Naturally, fans are going to look to that. They're going to look to the output. They're going to look to the snap counts. They're going to look to his uh, stat totals at the end of the year. And they're going to say, well, he underwhelmed. I think something that's not said enough about God Chow last year is that some of the difficulty that he had really defining his role came from the fact that the Patriots kept redefining his role. You kept seeing him kind of change alignments throughout the season. He really couldn't find the consistency that he needed, I think, to be the effective defensive lineman that the Patriots thought that they were getting. This year, you're seeing him line up more in the four technique while mixing in some five, some three in there as well. That's how we're watching him now in this uh, training camp over these past three days. It's a small sample size, folks. I get it. But – you do get a chance to see a little bit of what the Patriots might be doing and how they're going to deploy these guys. So at this point, if they do continue to do that, I think Gachow is more likely to maybe command a double team or two this year. And if that's the case, and we've talked about this with uh, uh, Christian Barmore before, when you have linemen that are consistently drawing two guys on them, that's going to free up the linebackers. It's going to free up the edge rushers. It's going to keep opposing quarterbacks uncomfortable. Also, what it does is it allows you to be able to get guys up front to be able to stop the run, and that's where some of the middle linebackers can come into play. So I like the move um, with God Chow. I know a lot of people are looking at it from a perspective that the Patriots are giving money to maybe someone that doesn't deserve it. I mean, I, I've heard that, um, and I've heard that rumbling. I think that's absolutely ridiculous. I think Devon definitely deserves what he got. The Patriots are not in the habit of just handing out money to guys that they like. <laughs> They're going to hand out money to guys that they think can be productive in their system. And look, he's got a $10.5 million signing bonus with this extension. His 2022 salary is now going to be $1.5 million, and his cap number is lowered from eight and three quarter million. That's what it's going to be right now. It was 10 and a quarter million. So the team now frees up 3 million, approximately 3 million in cap space. This could be a harbinger of things to come. Maybe the Patriots dip their toe in, or maybe they use it for operating costs this year. But regardless of what the Patriots are committing to this guy, and I think it's, I, I ne don't necessarily think it's a bad move. No, no, not at all. I, I uh, you know, I think it's a good move. I think they're setting themselves up, like I said, for the foreseeable future. Um, and they obviously like him. And I, the, the comments I saw yesterday uh, from some of the fans about Bill's defensive prowess were just comical. Like, uh, oh, Bill doesn't know what he's talking about. No, okay. You know, <laughs> Joe the plumber knows more about coaching defense than – <laughs> you know, the guy whose game plan is in the NFL Hall of Fame. Right. But that goes with the territory. You yep. know, that's what life is like uh, in Boston sports. Absolutely. But, uh, but you know, I, I like God Chow. I thought, um, you know, I read something yesterday. I think it was from PFF. The mm -hmm. last eight games of the year, he was very, very highly rated as a run defender last last year. Mm, so yep. uh, um, check those. I think PFF had that on their t Twitter uh, account, but uh, definitely check that out because he, I think he did the job. And obviously Bill saw that. 
And I, hey, I like the, the fact that they're going to keep him around. And we'll see if any of these younger guys can step up. Absolutely. And that is a big key in the Patriots moving forward is players stepping up and stepping into roles that maybe weren't filled last year. We're going to discuss one of those players in just a moment because Steve and I are going to flip the script, not Claire style flip the script like we did yesterday here on Locked On Patriots. But we're going to flip it up a little bit and talk about the offense and a new addition to the Patriots wide receiver core that is truly endearing himself, not just to his teammates, but also the crowd in attendance. The pop for this guy, Steve, is phenomenal. We're going to talk some Devontae Parker when this weekend episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues. But first, level with me, folks. We've all been in a situation at some point in our lives when we were a little tight on cash. Maybe you could only afford to put a few gallons of gas in your tank, or you've got another save the date, and you're wondering how you're going to be able to afford another gift. That's where Dave can help. Dave is the banking app that can help you get up to $500 instantly with extra cash. That's more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, or catch up on bills. You can finally tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out without any hang-ups. There's no interest and no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash. So if you're in a pinch and you need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand for future you. Download the Dave app today on the App Store right now. That's D-A-V-E. Sign up for an extra cash account and get up to $500 instantly. For terms and conditions, go to dave.com slash legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve, member FDIC. That's Dave. Future you will thank you. Patriots fans, we are joined by columnist extraordinaire and our Patriots Paisan here on Locked On Patriots, the great Steve Balistrieri of PatsFans.com. Steve, several New England Patriots are getting a little bit of extra hype. We always see this every time this year. Early in training camp, a player makes a move or two, they make a player or two, and all of a sudden they're being called the next camp darling. Mini camp, we saw it happen with Trey Nixon. That's come down to earth a little bit. Uh, the guy that's a hot name right now on the defensive side of the ball is second-year uh, safety Joshua Bledsoe. Cornerback Terrence Mitchell also getting a little buzz. But very few newcomers are generating the buzz like wide receiver Devontae Parker. And I think people could see this coming. Parker was one of the Patriots' more high-profile acquisitions in the offseason. Comes in with a pretty good name, knowing, seeing Parker a couple of times a year, uh, lining up with the Miami Dolphins. Patriots fans thought they had a pretty good idea of what this kid could do. But coming in, he looks – two things have really stood out to me watching him in training camp these last few days. One, he plays with a confidence and a swagger, but an ability that really allows him to blend both very well. And he does it very well. He plays his assignment as assigned. He knows the breaks. He knows the defensive tendencies of this team from having played against them because of it I think he's showing a lot of what he can do on offense the second thing I'm seeing is a real synergy with Mac Jones uh he really looks like he's very comfortable with Mac these two look like they're in step right off the bat that's a big key for a New England Patriots receiver we've seen so many talented receivers come here and not be able to get on the same page with the quarterback when Tom was running the show even the last couple of years, it's been difficult getting on the same page with Mac and, and Cam, uh, you know, the year before that. But these two guys are really starting to click on offense. When you look at Parker and you look at what he can bring to the table, are you surprised he's taking to the offense this quickly? No, not at all. I, I think, you know, when he's healthy, we've seen firsthand what he can do on the field. I mean, you remember he took Stefan Gilmore to school, basically. Mm. <laughs> you know, and that's one of the better cornerbacks in the league. At the time, he might have been the best cornerback in the league. So when he, when Parker is healthy, I think he's very, very talented. Um, so that part of it, we know he's capable. It's right. just can he stay healthy? And the fact that him and Mac are clicking this early, I, I think is huge positive. You know, they those two got together a couple of times in the off season, and it looks like it's paying dividends. So, I think that's fantastic. It gives him another weapon. Basically, uh, you know, I hate to throw uh, dirt on the corpse here, but 
he's going to be the guy that they thought they were drafting when they drafted Nikhil Harry. <laughs> you know, that big physical wide receiver that can go up and, and catch those contested passes. And, uh, you know, the fact that they've been focusing so much on, you know, red zone and, and down around the goal line early in camp tells you that they're trying to work out the kinks of that system. And I, I think that Parker is, is primed. Again, with the caveat that he can stay healthy, I think he's primed to have a really, really solid season. I think so, too. And from what we're seeing in Parker, I'm glad you mentioned the red zone because that really is the theme of the early days of training camp. It was the same thing last year. Bill came right out and said, look, until the pads go on, this is going to be primarily red zone work all week long. That's been the case the first three days. That'll continue into Saturday. Monday, the full pads come on. So, you know, then we're going to start to see things get mixed up a little bit. Then you're really going to see some football, folks. But right now, some of the drills that they're utilizing, uh, the Patriots practiced on Friday in shells and uh, shorts. Uh, looks like it's going to be the same thing on Saturday. So keep an eye on that, folks, if you're heading to the stadium uh, to watch the team. But bottom line, Parker is a force in that red zone. And this is something that when he was brought aboard, we talked about this. Murph and I talked about this. Um, we've talked a little bit about what he can do in the red zone and giving Mac that target. And we've also talked about him utilizing the tight ends, which Mac is also doing very well. That'll be a, a question for uh, for another day. Claire and I talked a little bit of tight ended yesterday. And Imagine right that. after we were done recording, uh, sure enough, Hunter Henry and John U. Smith go off and have their best day. And then on Friday, they really followed it up with a big time day. Uh, for the both of them. But Parker has been very consistent. He's been making excellent catches, and he looks really enthused and really happy to be in New England. That may seem like an irrelevant point to a lot of people, but I'm telling you, it really does feed off. Speaking to, uh, you know, Devante, uh, uh, you know, the members of the media did yesterday after practice, he just, he has a smile on his face. He looked very engaged. Um, he looked like someone that is really happy uh, to be a part of this team, but really happy to be a part of this fan base as well. And he mentioned that in his uh, first press meeting uh, via Zoom conference uh, right after he was acquired that this is a fan base he's kept an eye on for a good long time. When Devontae has made some of the better plays and he really had the catch of the day and opening day and also on Thursday, he got up pumping up the crowd and you can really see him enjoy himself. So that's good to see. And I think that's going to continue in the synergy that he's developing with Mac Jones. So great stuff from Devontae Parker. We look forward to that continuing and if the Patriots can figure things out in the red zone, which is typically where they've struggled to put the ball in the end zone and put points on the board, uh, this could be a better offense than people are giving it credit for, Steve. Dare I even say that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I you know, looking at the team, I know there are question marks, but I, I'm not worried about the offense this year. Mm -hmm. um, I, I really like that the additions that they've added. And I, I think they're, you know, if they can stay healthy, that's always a big thing with any team, you know, staying healthy through the, the rigors of the season. Mm -hmm. I think they're going to put some points on the board because I think Mac Jones is going to take a really big leap in year two. And, you know, these guys, the other guys, I know Parker's brand new, but Aguilar, you know, uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Kendrick Bourne, you mentioned Smith and Henry. They're all in their second year now. And now, you know, you can see that the early days of camp, they're not trying to figure things out. They already know, right. <clears throat> excuse me, the system. And now they're just going out and playing the way they're capable of. And I know Jono had a big day today. Yeah, absolutely. He did a leaping grab over Kyle Duggar, which brought the crowd to its feet in unison yeah. uh, in Foxborough. And you're glad to see it. Another guy that really is at prototypical move tight end that can be a real threat in the red zone. You're starting to see that come from John who look for big things from him this year as well. And you mentioned Nelson. He's looked good. He had a great catch the other day, arguably the catch of the day. He and Parker really, I think, went neck and neck for catch of the day and opening day. Uh, and Kendrick has been solid right along. Uh, I, I think he's he's always going to be a favorite of Mac. And if you can start utilizing these pass catchers along with guys like Stevenson and Harris in the running game, 
all of a sudden you have a very diverse offense that's capable of beating you in a lot of ways. Maybe not the marquee name up at the top that all the national pundits love to utilize and throw in your face that the Patriots don't have a number one, when they don't have a WR1. You know, they got a lot of good WRs on this roster that can really help to fill that void. So I don't think they had a WR1 in six Super Bowl wins. No, they really didn't. I mean, you you take a look. I mean, naturally, you hear the word WR1. The first name that pops inside my head is Randy Moss. And unfortunately, in the years here, they couldn't get the job done. And that's no fault of Randy's folks. <laughs> Talking one of the most dynamic talents I've ever watched in my entire life. But it's not a requirement in terms of being able to put together a, a winning team, especially with the way the Patriots do business. So we'll see what happens. It's not that we don't want one, but it's just... I think a lot of times some of the fans get a little bit too overvalued in having that name, and you can lose a lot in the translation. We're seeing that this year and that the diversity in this offense may be something that the Patriots are able to utilize their advantage and really turn some heads doing it. Steve, the cess of the offense is up to the players, but it's also up to the guys calling the plays, and that's been the buzzword in New England all offseason long. Who is calling the offensive plays in New England? Is it Matt Patricia? Is it Joe Judge? Is it Nick Cayley? Is it Bill Belichick himself? Well, from what we've seen in the first few days, folks, looks like it actually might be a collaborative effort all four of those guys. That's right. Too many cooks in the kitchen? Or is it just right in terms of the Patriots adding in as much flavor as they can to this new look offense in 2022. Steve and I will discuss the Patriots play calling when we wrap up this weekend episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast. But first, training camp is here, folks. Summer is here. The temperatures are hot. You're out. You're ready to go. And if you're on your way to training camp, you want to make sure that you're fueled to cheer on your favorite team. And if you need some food on the go to do so, Go to our good friends at Spilt Bars are the perfect snack to take with you on family vacations, up to training camp, wherever you might be going. Throw them in your bags, in your kids' backpacks. Make sure that everyone has a bar so you are fueled for all of your summer adventures. The best part about Built Bar, folks, is that they're healthy and delicious. No longer do you have to sacrifice delicious food for health. With Built Bar, you can have both. And it's easy. All you have to do is go to Built.com and order your products now. All Built Bars, all Built Puffs are covered in 100% real chocolate. That means with Built Bar, you can eat healthy and you can actually enjoy doing it. So don't do it today. Go to Built.com and enter the promo code LOCK15 for 15% off your next order. That's promo code LOCK15 at Built.com. Patriots fans, we're going to take you home here on this weekend episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast. Joined, as always, by my good friend, my Patriots paisan, the great Steve Balistrieri of PatsFans.com. And Steve, we've talked about a defensive lineman getting an extension. We've talked about a wide receiver popping from the rest and really endearing himself to the Foxborough faithful. But if we're being honest, the big buzzword around New England has been the play calling of Matt Patricia. Um, whether or not Matt is going to be the offensive play caller, is it going to be Joe Judge shipping in? Is Bill Belichick going to be the all-overseeing guru? Is tight ends coach Nick Cayley going to dip his toe into uh, you know the pool a little bit and try his hand at some play calling? For the most part, in the last couple of days, it's been Matt Patricia calling the plays. He's had the walkie-talkie. Uh, he's been you know relaying this information. He's been very intricately involved in the huddle working very closely with Mac, very closely with the offensive line. So you're starting to see that come forward, and it's looking likely that Patricia is going to take a lion's share of the uh, the response. But on Friday, a little wrinkle got thrown into the plans, where during 11-on-11s, we saw Bill Belichick with the play sheet in his hand. And before every snap, whether it was Mac Jones or whether it was the rookie Bailey Zappi, because Brian Hoyer did not participate in Friday's practice, they went over to Bill. Bill's talking to them. He's showing them the plays. And then they'd go back into the huddle and they'd execute. And all of a sudden, now you're seeing social media flooded with, well, maybe it's going to be Bill Belichick after all. Maybe the evil genius is pulling the strings. Maybe he's the all-knowing godfather behind the scenes, you know. Uh, so, you know, I want to do it. I'll be the one to hold the strings, Steve. <laughs> so... 
this uh, that could be that that's probably Bill. You know, that's probably Bill talking to Matt. You know, Matt, I wanted you to be the one to hold the string. Um, sorry, folks. Digress. He's a bad don. Yeah, uh, may rest in peace. Now he really may rest in peace. God rest in peace. Uh, uh, the uh, know. the great the great James Connors and Pino Polion. But Steve, before we wrap things up here, when you look at the play calling of the New England Patriots, um, is a collaborative effort the best way to go this year? Meaning Patricia, Judge, maybe a little bit of Kaylee, but Belichick with the overarching uh, you know responsibilities. Well, uh, you know. I think it's going to be Patricia now. I'm, I'm pretty convinced it's going to be him. I think they're just working on things to see how their communication flows with everybody. And and I think Bill is doing it for two reasons today. I think he likes messing with people's heads. <laughs> and and I, I think it's probably a little bit of, you know, getting inside the huddle, so to speak. You know, maybe that's where he's looking at how guys are prepared and, you know, seeing how well they they fit into the system, see if the, how they pick things up from him. You know, he might be throwing a little bit of wrinkles in there, seeing, you know, how they react to it. But we know Bill loves messing with people. So, But I do think it's going to be Matt Patricia because I think if you're constantly flipping things around, it, it tends to create some confusion, mm -hmm. and I Very don't think they're going to do that. I mean, you know, if one of any of them sees something, I'm sure they'll talk about it. But uh, I think it's going to be Matt. Yeah, I think it's going to be Matt as well. And look, not only because I agree with you that I think Bill likes to throw a wrench into the plans every now and then just to kind of muddy the waters, but... Also, because we've talked to several offensive linemen this week, Trent Brown, Cole Strange, you've heard their penchant for, uh, or I, you sh I should say you've heard opinion on Matt Patricia's penchant for he's knowing the defensive reaction to things. And I think that's one of the things that may give him the, the heads up or maybe a leg up on the competition. Joe Judge is a very hands-on, very vocal coach. You can hear him out there barking, uh, you know, a lot of different, I say barking, I don't, you know, I mean, it's not disrespectful or anything like that, but you can hear him, him very, being very vocal uh, with the receivers, the quarterbacks, about missing holes, missing assignments, where they need to be. Uh, he, he's very good and very hands-on in that method, but Matt Patricia, I think, takes a level-headed approach because he sees things from both sides. He's played offensive line, he's coached offensive line, but he's been a dater a lot longer, and he's done that job very well. Uh, despite of what some people may tell you, Matt Patricia did a serviceable job here as a uh, a defensive coordinator. So he sees the things from both sides, and I think that's where Bill Belichick understands his value as a potential play caller this year. That being said, I do think Judge is going to have some input. I think Kaylee's going to have a little bit of input. John o. Smith had glowing things to say about him after practice. But ultimately, I do think the play calling responsibilities are going to be with Matt Patricia. So to bring it all home, Steve, and if we're looking at the Patriots play calling hierarchy, if we're looking for that chart, you know, the chart in Godfather 2 where they had all those guys <laughs> in the hierarchy and the, the, the crime yeah. families and the capos and, the you know, the, the soldiers – I would say Matt Patricia is probably going to be your Michael Corleone of play calling. He's going to be in charge. But if he ever needs help, who's a better consigliere than Bill Belichick? <laughs> Perfectly said, my man. Perfectly <laughs> said. No, and the thing is, you know, a, a lot of what we heard this spring, well, neither one of them have called plays before. Well, Matty P has called plays just on the defensive side. Right. So – and, you know, Matt talked about that on day one. I watched mm -hmm. that press conference. And, Absolutely. you know, he said, you know, he's he's given me that different perspective. Right. And Trent Brown, I think, said the same thing, where he's he's mm -hmm. given it to him how defenses want to play, and this is how we're going to react to it. So until we see it on the field, and, and if I, I don't see any uh, miscommunications or guys lined up in the wrong place or – you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I don't have one thing bad to say about it because no, he's been I, there. He's done that. He's been a head coach. so Absolutely. And, and that's something as well that I think is maybe not said enough uh, about Matt Patricia in that to be a head coach in this league, there has to be a certain prowess, a certain 
um, command that you have on both sides of the ball. And whether you agree that he was a very good head coach or a mediocre head coach or a poor head coach, he's still a head coach and he knows how to play both sides of the ball and knows the value of both sides of the ball. So I agree with you. And I think that his perspective gives him the leg up on the competition, but it is interesting to see Bill out there. And I think Bill is going to have a good hand in the offense this year. And I think you're already seeing that. We're seeing him spending a lot more time with the offense than the defense. Uh, that really happened in mini camp, and we're continuing to see it in training camp, Steve. So we'll continue to keep our sharp eye, folks, on Foxborough and on the Patriots' play-calling situation. But in the meantime, I have to thank my good friend, my Patriots Paisan, for always being there for the handoff when I need him. Steve, it's always great to get your wisdom and counsel, and I thank you for joining me here today on the pod. Again, folks, you want to follow him on Twitter at Steve7SFG. Definitely check out all the great work that he does for PatsFans.com. His Sunday column, I liken to the Sunday paper. When it arrives, I know I'm going to be well-informed and well-entertained when it comes to the New England Patriots. I did steal that Sunday paper line from my good friend Murph, so he's yelling at something right now going, hey, that's my line. Tip my cap to you, Don Murph. That was your line. All kidding aside, Steve, thank you so much for joining me today, my friend. Oh, my pleasure as always. Anytime. Absolutely, folks. And... Always look forward to you joining us here on Locked On Page every day. Proud part of the Locked On Pass Network. Now that you've made us your first listen, folks, go out and make your second listen. Locked On NFL, all the great hosts that we have across the network, joining forces to bring you the latest and greatest information from the national side of the National Football League. In the meantime, please continue to stay safe, stay well. Be the change that you wish to see in the world, folks. On behalf of the great Steve Balistrieri, I'm Mike DeBate. Have a great day, everyone, and enjoy Patriots training camp. Go Pats.